Creating a Django Project, Section 2. In this section, we're going to create a Django project, a flight scheduler application, or a Django app. We'll also install the Django REST framework, or DRF, which is really a powerful framework for creating web services. And finally, we'll be setting and testing these REST APIs. Creating a flight scheduler project. So before we go further, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between a project versus an app in Django context. So in Django, a project is usually a collection of configurations, modules, and apps. Okay, and it can contain many, many apps. And then an app, if you could think of an app, just a really just a simple independent web applications, things like a weblog or a poll or a calendar, weather app, things like that. And then an app can be contained in many projects. So if you are you know, familiar with Angular and Vue.js and other frameworks, an app can be thought of as a component, if that makes things easier. So for illustration purposes, let's just say that we have a project called Project A, and this project consists of two apps. Then a Project B could you know, include one of Project A's app in it, and of course has its own app too. And look like so, Project C may include just those two apps from Project A and Project B, right? So you can see the logic here. So apps are independent components or applications that can be reused again in other projects. So if we take a closer look at the anatomy of a Django project, then you will see the following common items. One of these is this manage.py file. This is a module. So in every Python file is a module. And what it does is basically, it's almost like an alias to the Django admin command utility file that performs many of the command line tasks, like, you know, you're creating applications, manage interacting with the databases, and so on. And you also see a file called db.sqlite3. This is a database file. This is a default database used by Django when you create a Django project. Of course, you can always change it to a different system or a different file, but this is a default after you run the Django application. Then you will see something like this, a photo called VNV, which is the photo we created in the previous section. This is where we have the virtual environment, or the, the files to create the virtual environment. Not only that, it contains all the Django package and other third-party packages and applications in this folder here. So this is where all the files are stored. And of course, you can call it whatever you want, the folder. It's not really important. And of course, it may contain other files and folders too, things like maybe like some static assets and so on. But in the heart of all this Django project itself is the project itself, right? The project folder. And this folder here contains some really important files. One of these you will find is the underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. And if you are familiar with the, you know, the Django framework or the Flask or I guess most of the Python frameworks, you see that this is a very special file that tells Python that this folder is a package. Okay, without this, Python will not be able to distinguish that. So make sure that's in there, even if it's empty. And you might also have a settings.py file. This is just a configuration file to configure your project. Really important. And you have this urls.py. This is what's called the root URL. So all your root URL patterns will be defined in this file. Of course, later on you'll see that inside a application, they also have their own urls.py file too. And because that's the way you should be built, right? So each application should have their own URLs. And no matter what, they're still going to be linked to this root URL. And so you can see these are the actual things you'll see. And one of these also is the wsgipy. This is the web server gateway interface, which is just an interface that talks to Django and Python, or those who are built upon this interface or this specification for web development. So that is also needed. And then of course you see these apps here. These apps, as you can see, don't misunderstand that these are have to be contained within the folder, the actual project folder. Well, I mean, in a way they are, but then you'll see that it's kind of confusing because there are two folder structures that would look like exactly the same name, you'll see in a bit. And so it doesn't mean that you have to contain these apps in the same folder. It could be outside of it too. To create a Django project is really, really simple. You see that all you have to do is just use this command called ddjango-admin, followed by a keyword called start project, and then the name of your project. And you create a Django project just like that, okay? But you just wanna make sure that when you name your project and modules, you wanna always try to follow 
Python's naming convention. And that is by using all lowercase letters, if possible at all, and use on underscores if you want to separate words. But usually it's all lowercase. That's just a convention. And try, you know, avoid using any names that might have a conflict with any packages or the keywords like Python or Django or test, right? No, you don't want to use those, okay? Let's head over to Visual Studio Code and start creating our Django project. Okay, so here in Visual Studio, I'm in the Django workspace and inside the back end here, this is where we're going to create our project. So click that and right click and go to the terminal. Make sure you're in the back end terminal and make sure you also see this event folder. This is in there already. It shouldn't be in here. So let's see. Yep, it should be there. Okay, we're going to create the project called Flight Scheduler. And then you can do that by using the command Django dash admin and space followed by the keyword start project and then the name of the project. So I'm going to use my, like you said earlier, it's called the flight scheduler. And again, I'm using the convention all lowercase, even though I have two words. I could go in here and put an underscore if I want to, right? But I'm just going to stick with this all lowercase here and then hit enter. Okay, so before I do that though, I, I shouldn't do that first because I need to be inside the virtual environment. All right, so I'm going to go undo this again. And you want to make sure you're inside the virtual environment first. Okay, so now I'm in the virtual environment. I'm going to back up, see if it's still there. Okay, so Django dash admin start project. And then the project name will be flight scheduler. Okay, hit enter the name of your project called flight scheduler. Inside that, you see there's another folder called flight scheduler, right? What I was saying was that your apps doesn't have to be inside this folder here. Usually you'll see that it's going to be in there. It's easier to maintain that way, but they can also exist outside of this folder here. Now, these two folders are one is important, one is not so important. The outside folder, you can change this to a different name if you want. It doesn't, it doesn't matter much, but the one that's inside is an important one. So this one you want to keep. Okay, so by convention, just keep them as they are. Don't change them if you don't have to. So you see that if I close this again, you see outside this say manage.py file. This is the file that you will use inside the command line to do some of the uh, tasks. And then inside the flight scheduler here is this is a package. You can tell because it has this init I file. As you can see, there's nothing in there, but it's required, right? Then you have the settings. We'll do some settings later on for this file. URLs, your, the, the uh, root URL, and then the BUSGI here. You need that for the project. Okay, so as you can see, you don't see the database yet because we haven't run the program yet. So I have to go into the flight scheduler folder. So let me sure I go into CD flight scheduler. Now you can see that I can see the manage file here. Then I can type in pi manage and then run server. If you hit that, it's going to run. It's going to compile your code. Make sure it's all correct. There's any errors you see, it will tell you right here. If you don't see any errors, it will say successfully and it will be waiting down here at the bottom, right? And it tells you the server is running at this port number at this URL at port 8000. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one here and go to my browser. And then here I'm going to paste it. And there you go. If you see this re rocket flying here, this is a Django project and running at port 8000. Okay, so your question would be you may wonder where all these things come from. So back in here, you see that there's nothing here. And also, what's something new you see is this db.sqlite. This is a binary file. Later on, it'll contain binary data, your actual database information here but it's here because we run the program. The template is actually inside the Venn folder. And inside here, you see the library and then the packages, Django. And then if you go to the templates and then there's a temp default URL conf, okay, for configuration. And this is the file that generates that view you see on the web browser. Okay, this is a default template you see out there. And so that's where it loads its content from. Now, next thing I want to show you really quickly is that you notice it runs port 80. If you have a conflict with a port number, you can always run a different port. So if I go and press Control C to cancel it. So you run a different port, you can just run through the command, same thing, pi manage pi dot run server, and then put a space and put a new port numbers. Maybe you can run like port 9000, for example. And this is just temporary. Every time you run it, it's going to run under port 9000, as you can see here. Okay, so now it's a 9000. If I go back to my browser, and if I reload this, this should not work anymore. Okay, until I change it to port 9000. So this is not permanent, it's just temporary. 
if you want something more permanent, you will have to go and modify the config file, which is inside Django core, the manage folder here inside the commands, and the run server command is the one you want to modify. Here is the port number. It says default port is 8000. That's what it uses for. So you can change this to 10,000 if you want. If I do that, go back to my command line and run without the 9,000. You'll see that it should run. It said to port 10,000. So it ports 10,000. But this is not recommended. You shouldn't do that because I don't know. It's just not safe. So let's leave it as it is. Just remember that it's what the directory is. It's inside this package location, right, in this module. And you can import this into the manage file, the manage pi file over here. And you can do it from here. So you can modify it. We override that in here. So for example, I can say same as kind of the same as this one here. So I can say from the Django core dot management dot I think it was from commands dot run server dot pi. So run server and then from there you can just import the command is it as run server something like that and then you can now set the port number through this object here. Okay, you could just say command import run server is fine, but you can say run server here dot default port equals a new port, like you can put like 12,000, it doesn't matter. So now if you save it, so you don't have to literally go and modify this file, you can just run from here and you can override that in there. So if I go and see, you see that now it's changed to port 12,000. Do it this way, otherwise just keep the default. I'm gonna go back and just comment this out and keep the default as it was. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show you and we have created the uh, Django project.